we record them so a lot of people watch the replays because some people can't watch like while we're doing it so um so a lot of people watch the replays which is nice because i've got them in a few different spots so that they keep on living right so yeah i know my friend's gonna hop on too so and sometimes there's like a like within the first five minutes i see like i i'm wondering if i should switch to having it live instead of zoom i i just haven't done the oh like do it in the group like sort of a yes sort of thing and do it that way. yes yeah possibly because it's just like i think it's it's making life as easy as possible for people isn't it and if they exactly link and clicks and anything and it's not a lot but when we're all so frazzled and busy just anything and then i guess if you're sitting down for a cup of coffee at lunchtime or, or, or mid-morning or, and it's pops up in your feed or you get that notification so it might be worth trying so yes yeah exactly so i was gonna i was saying i'm like okay i'll do this one as a zoom like i normally do and then uh we'll see how uh maybe i'll explore for the next ones to see um maybe i can do both like a, a recording and a, like live at the same time in the facebook group because i think that people would pop on when they see it like because when they're scrolling oh yeah this is happening i need to i need to watch this right now so yeah okay cool i'm gonna i was just looking if my friend was looking she was grabbing a cup of coffee so anyway <laughs> she'll hop on yeah okay so we'll get started because you know i want to respect everybody's time and so thank you so much michelle for being with us today i'm so excited michelle and i met well, a few years ago, I can't remember how we found each other. A while ago now, though, yeah. Yes, yeah. And uh, Michelle is um, um, also a member of my stock photography membership, Stock by Jules. <laughs> and I love you so much because you're just such an amazing person. I love your energy and uh, everything you stand for. And also, I'm so excited to have you here with us, training us on about marketing. And I'm also very excited to learn more about what you're going to talk about. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you. And we'll get into the training part of this call. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you so much, Julie. Well, today is going to be really flexible. Um, well, flex I think relaxed was more the word I was looking for. I'm not going to have us all doing yoga. <laughs> Don't worry, not flexible like that. Um, but I'm really, I wanted it to be relaxed and chatty because I thought that reflected our vibe, Julie, because obviously there's an ocean between us. You're in Canada and I'm in the United Kingdom. But then we through meeting in a Facebook group and then me becoming a member of your Stock by Jewels library, which I mean, a year and a half now, at least maybe longer, which I, I love. And if anyone goes and looks at any of my brand photos, any of my sales pages, any if it's not me, it's of one of Julie's photos. <laughs> Apart from on my new hashtag training, I used um it's sort of one from uh, when I go into WordPress, I think it has, signs up to Unsplash and I put in hashtags and I was like, oh, I like that one. And the guilt I felt because it wasn't one of your photos. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh my goodness, you're, you're so cute. I love you. <laughs> I'm forgetting yes, you absolutely. Absolutely. And then for all we've never met in person, we've become sort of firm friends and we Facebook message and voice message and then we're in each other's Facebook groups. And if anyone's wondering from a marketing point of view how to create content for their Facebook group, every time I see a good post in Julie's group, I'm like, oh, I like that. I'll go and do it in my group and then send Julie a message going, I just stole your Facebook post. <laughs> okay because i stole it off somebody else <laughs> i do that too all the time <laughs> so, so there you go so it's i thought today we'll talk about marketing but nice and nice and relaxed um and i'll take you through what i think are some of the key but very natural mistakes that a lot of small business owners make and then obviously what you can do to unpick those and then look at your business and try and make sure that that you're not doing those if anyone's got any questions by all means and um, pop them in the chat and i can come back and 
answer those at the end or even as we go through and Julie if you want to jump in with questions you know by all means feel free um, I'm, I'm not doing slides and powerpoint because as I said I wanted it to be more of a, of a of a conversation um what do you need to know about me um Michelle British mum to three kids self-employed for nine and a bit years now my husband's self-employed um just started to homeschool my little girl who has just turned eight which is not because of COVID homeschool, but like permanent homeschool. So I think I'm learning more than she is. So, so just sort of one of those women where there's a lot of life happening all of the time, really, and I'm and, and trying to juggle. So I'm all about realistic, realistic goals, realistic marketing, realistic expectations, for your business so that if we can keep it realistic we've got a really good chance of hitting our goals financial email open rates facebook views whatever it is but we keep it realistic we hit it we celebrate it we feel brilliant so i guess that's a little bit of like suggesting to people to really avoid that comparatonitis comparisonitis that's oh, am i gonna get my pit <laughs> yes yes and and we do that so much right like i think we all all do it and it's it can paralyze us right yeah and that's why we need to stop comparing ourselves with other people's success and look at what we're doing and which is you know i guess one of the reasons why i was so drawn to stock by jewels was not just because of the pretty things and the mugs of coffee but I'm always taking photos and sending them to Julie to say, look at the mug I found in our local supermarket. Should I send it to Canada? Anyway, <laughs> it was, I love shops, <laughs> but it was that the women were real and they felt like me. And that that's so important is in our, in our businesses is that we accept who we are and what our business needs to achieve for us so that then our marketing can reflect that. York. don't forget to send me uh, don't, don't forget to send me a photo of um your cup of tea with the right amount of milk in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we long have this debate don't we about i said julie those cups of tea on your website they are far too milky that's no one is going to think that's my cup of tea it's just it's not british <laughs> But then we I'm waiting for you um, from the UK and this is where Rebecca says that her tea looks like chicken soup I don't know <laughs> and Marie's husband is actually British so um so does he do the milk and the tea thing Anne Marie oh yeah but there's a there's a formula to actually making the tea and there's a oh. new spoon for every cup mm. yeah <laughs> it's, a splash, it's a splash of milk and you have to pour the water over the tea cup. new spoon every time it's like in and out and then just a splash of uh, oh yeah. yeah see everyone has their own special ways but we better not debate the ways of making yeah. tea because we'll be here for at least a couple of hours <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me me I, my mum still doesn't drink my tea she just says oh <laughs> my mum's in her 60s i mean if i cannot make you a cup of tea by now ma'am i've got i've got no chance so anyway i digress let's kick on so okay the five marketing mistakes that most small business owners make and this is not a criticism this is not me picking at all this is just little observations from working with lots of clients with lots of different businesses over the years so the first big mistake now you've got to imagine these are all hashtags okay the first big mistake that most people try and make is to sell or to promote hashtag all the things all the things they try and sell all the things i've got this i've got this i sell this i offer this buy this and it's sort of if i it's like going into a shop 
and the shelves are so stacked. Have you ever been into one of those little shops and it, it doesn't feel like an Aladdin's cave of mysteries if you feel overwhelmed because you you don't know where to start. There's literally so many different things of so many different types on those shelves. You think, oh, and you'll do your best to make an excuse and leave. And quite often, that's what small business owners portray in their marketing. And that's just, I think it's because as a small business owner, you very rarely are taught marketing. You pick it up as you go along. And you also probably lack confidence. And people tell you to niche, to do less, to focus. But there's a fear there. And you think, if I sell less, or if I, even if I have all of these other things on the sidelines, but if I really focus on selling one or two things, then people won't buy so I have to sell all the things and that is it's energy zapping for one definitely the messages then get really confused then people are talking to you about well you need to do search engine optimization on your blogs and you need to do this on your website and you need to be using certain hashtags on Instagram but you're like well if I'm selling all of the things, then how do I know what to do search engine optimization about? And how do I know where I should be sort of trying to place my pins on Pinterest? Or, um, you know, what on earth do I even write a sales page about? And I'm trying to sort of link back to the other trainings that you've had, you know, Julie, from, from the other brilliant people who've come into the group. When, so when you're trying to sell all of the things, I, I witness small business owners then getting into a total muddle with their marketing, the, you know, the marketing muddle. And I really believe in done, not perfect, that it's better to get your marketing done and out there, even if it's not perfect. And there's been times when I've thought, I hope Julie doesn't see that image with her gorgeous photo on because it's just my canvas skills are really not <laughs> shit hot. <laughs> it's like, it's had to go out. It's, it's had, to, you know, it's had to go out. So I'd rather it's done, not perfect and out there. But when small business owners get into this marketing muddle and they're not sure what to sell because they're trying to sell all of the things, they end up doing no marketing and selling none of the things or less of the things. So if this is resonating with you or with business friends you've got please like feel free to um, chat in the chat as well or Julie have you recognized this in any of your business friends it's funny because Anne-Marie and I were talking this morning and um I was telling she um she sent out an email to her list and she said did it look okay and you know because I think we question ourselves so much um in the beginning throughout like are we are we sending the right like we we kind of we we don't have the confidence in ourselves because we sometimes are we doing it right are we sending out the right message are we sending out the right things like does it look okay right so i think that we can fall into that trap of of questioning ourselves and then we end up doing nothing but when the thing that we did do was really awesome yeah so and i love that um and i think that's really important that you have trusted business friends of people you know like um julie you know i said me and you if i if it was something new or it, quite often images do these look okay and just having someone that actually you know has got your back who will say that's brilliant or equally might go no that's you really need to change that so having someone who not even a mentor that you paid for but a business friend who's slightly further along in their journey than, than you are can be really useful. And sitting down and talking to your business friends, not sometimes even so much friends and family, but existing customers, people who value what you do and say, what is it about me that makes me special? What do you really want to buy from me? What is it that I really, really do better than anybody else? And quite often what you find is they think what you're brilliant at 
and special at and what they value you for is sometimes not the thing that you've really been pushing because sometimes the things that you're pushing are the easy things, the easy wins. And, and I, you know, as an example, I am doing a live training next week and I have been battling with the pricing gods, gods in my own head this morning going, how much should I charge for this? Because it's the first time I've done something like this. Should I charge a little bit, a big bit? And I've had to go to some business friends who've sort of given me a metaphorical wet fish slap around the face and gone, woman, just charge what you need to charge for it. And, you know, and, and, and sell and sell the, the thing. So yeah, having, having that support so people can really pull out what the thing or the things are that you need to focus on and then trust in them. And if they're telling you you're amazing at this, you're brilliant at this, then look at marketing that, look at promoting that and trust in your audience. Sometimes, you know, I think we ask partners or we ask best friends or... So talk to some people, get some feedback and let you see if you can get away from all of the things so that's one my internet might be a little bit on a little bit wobbly but hopefully it should all of the things so the next one would be all of the people hashtag all of the people so not only do we try and sell all of the things we try and sell them to all of the people so this is imagining that I, well the way i teach it is i have a, a sink a big imagine a big sink full of teeny tiny people bobbing about in the sink and the sink is full of people and the objective with your marketing is to get someone in that sink to go oh you, you're talking to me oh, oh oh that sounds interesting and they sort of wiggle themselves down into the pipe and then you keep marketing and you keep and they wiggle and they keep wiggling and they wiggle because they really want what you've got. And then they pop out of the end and they're customers, which is really, a, 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 you know, an old fashioned sales funnel. But I, I like the marketing sync and I like that little analogy. Because if you can imagine the sink is full, the tap is the Facebook posts and the YouTube videos and paid for advertising and these messages are pouring into the sink not just from you but from all of the other people with all of the world I have, to, I have to shout to everyone i have to shout really loudly it's the only way people are going all of these other messages pouring in the the hubbub and the, it, you know, is so loud. They just can't hear you. And if they do get a little bit, they're like, you talk actually, it's more powerful with our marketing to find the right people to talk to and talk to them softly and quietly and in a whisper and with those nice emails or people within our Facebook group and it, it, I do always often, you know, you've got to speak with pride and joy, but you, if you find the right people to talk to and market to, you find that, well, if we were talking like sales to our conversion rate goes up, you can talk to a million people in that sink and go, yeah, I'm talking to a million people and not a single person will even get in the pipe in your funnel, let alone pop out the end. You can talk to 50 and convert 10 of them. And I, I find this with small business owners, with newer business owners, giving people that confidence to say, you're not talking to them. So you're not putting a paid for advert, advert in that newspaper. You're not going to talk to that networking group. You are not going to spend three hours of your day on LinkedIn because it's not, you know, it giving people the confidence to say, I'm not doing that in my marketing because that marketing is talking to those people and I don't need to talk to them. So we don't need to talk to 
all of the people, which is why Julie's message, Julie's tagline is, you know, not just about the beautiful photos, but it's for women, not guys, women, um, 40 plus. So not in the 30, so, you know, for, but that immediately resonates with me. I'm like, oh, oh, I need to go and have a look at this. And I, did you have that tagline earlier on when we met Julie? Were you that specific no. about talking? No. And you know what? Like I, I, on that point, I also think that I resisted. I resisted doing the exercises of niching down and figuring out who my, my people are because I, I, I don't know what. I resisted it for so long. And it's, it's, it's the first most important thing we need to do if we want success in our businesses. And um, so I actually started and I really didn't have an idea of who my ideal client was. It wasn't until about about six months in that I started realizing that they, from people saying to me, you have photos of female entrepreneurs in their, in their like 40s plus of all shapes and sizes and diversity and everything. When people started commenting on that and the fact that also I'm a portrait photographer, so it's easy for me to capture emotion and feeling in my photos because that's that's what I'm good at. That's my gift. And so when people started to comment more on those aspects of my photos, that's when I realized, okay, this is this is who I'm talking to. And so that's when I really honed down and kind of exercise did that exercise of of figuring out who my ideal client is and niching down more. So brilliant and I think as well so some some of us will get so far into our business and things will change so when I set up my business it had a completely different name and I was a, a part-time marketing manager for hire so I took on short medium-term contracts I did the implementation I wasn't important because as far as the outside world was concerned it was my client doing the marketing so to then suddenly become me and my brand and be front and center has been quite the, the journey and after working with bigger clients you know sort of small medium-sized enterprises 15 to sort of 100 staff to then come and say I want to work with small business owners possibly part-time business owners mums who are setting up a business to cover um you know their their salary from their career if they're they're, they're sort of stay-at-home mums now and I want to help them get started with their marketing I'm not about taking them to you know the in-depth bits of Facebook ads and I'm not here to help them with um I'm trying to think of some really convoluted marketing stuff but you, you know the, even like Pinterest when I watched the Pinterest training I was like I, I couldn't help anybody do, do Pinterest. So that's why I help you get started, get into the basics, get into good habits. And then when you know you need to do Pinterest or you know you need to really become really good at blogging, I can show you where you need to go and we can build on that skill set. But everyone said to me, no, 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 you need to be doing the big marketing. And I thought, I, I don't want to. I want to work with the, the smaller people. So even when you know your marketing stuff and you know you need to find out who your ideal client, buyer persona, I call them perfect person, it it can take a while to get there. So sometimes it is just trusting in the journey, knowing that you'll figure it out as you go along, allowing yourself to make mistakes. Sometimes then you go, how did that, why did that person buy off me? They're so not my perfect person. But that's what happens as well. When you start selling some of the things and you start speaking to some of the people, what happens is your message still filters out there into the wider world and it enables people to self-select. And usually what happens is people come into your world warmer because they feel like they're they're one of you. They feel like you're you're saying you're saying to them, you're my right sort of person. I can help you. But then every so often someone else just comes in and, and buys and you're like, well, where did they come from? But, you know, they've just been that like random dude who's summoned around in the sink and thinking, hey, I love your stuff. So um, does anyone 
No, I've got a couple of you on camera. Do any of you know who Leonie Dawson is? Leonie from Australia. So I haven't got one of her. Oh, I have. So this is um, nice. 25th is my old one now. So Leonie is um, similar to Denise Duffield Thomas. Started at a similar sort of time as Denise and uh, um, Denise from um, Get Rich, Lucky Bitch fame. And they're both Australian and sort of came up through the online ranks. And Leonie does her workbooks and she sold over $10 million in workbooks working part time around her kid. She's, she's a hippie and um, she swears like an absolute trooper. And <laughs> but she's made over uh, there's over $10 million in online courses and selling the workbooks. She's not my ideal client at all i'm here to help the little person get started last week i swear i woke up checked my email inbox and i or it and there was an email from leonie dawson that's what you i was like who's i don't know who that is but yay that's take so your, like, cool take your biggest like sort of business star here someone that you look up to i bought from leonie um but and she she was like, I love your stuff. I just want, I, I love your stuff. And then um, she followed through some links and she bought some stuff and she bought some stuff that I was an affiliate of. So, you know, she's that dude that's swimming in the sink going, oh, I'm quite interested in that. Not normally my sort of thing, but it, so people will still find you. And I think that's the fear when you only talk to some of the people about some of the things. People are afraid that you will alienate everyone and actually you don't because you're so much clearer on your message other people if someone's recommended you or said you need to go and hunt out this person they're that much clearer on what you offer and quite often it's like Meh, i'll take a gamble on this this looks interesting so really honing down that message helps your core people but it doesn't necessarily alienate other people either and you know if your business hero gets in touch and tells you your stuff's okay then <laughs> who, who am i to argue <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i love it who am i to argue so okay so we've done all of the things to all of the people so there's a bit of a theme coming now one of the mistakes that i didn't have to mention but you've mentioned it julie um you mentioned emotion so i'll very quickly touch on emotion your marketing needs to have emotion and i don't know obviously i'm like jessica and i'm marie and Rosalyn. I, I know rebecca and any of the other people who might come and watch on replay i don't know what your businesses are but i get a feel you know there's a well of love and joy and positivity and collaboration and cooperation you know when I comment on the threads in Julie's groups and see what everyone does we have businesses on the whole oh, I'm getting a tingly moment which usually means I'm on something nice that our businesses are there to celebrate support guide educate enrich and so you need emotion in your marketing going I'm a coach and I help women get more out of their lives whilst it's brilliant you know or you know, I'm Michelle and I do marketing we need that emotion in our message and that can come not just from what you say not just from what you write but also how you look so you know Julie's photos are really good it, it just you know you can get obviously emotion across in a photo but stories, your stories, the stories of clients, those little takeaway bits, that emotion, weaving it in to your blogs, into your emails, into your um, into your Instagram posts, your whatever marketing you do, we need to be weaving emotion in. And that that is not to say that every single email you send needs to be like, you know, a tearjerker. <laughs> It doesn't have to be a Netflix saga because emotion is joy. Emotion is surprise. Emotion is anger. Emotion is grief. 
emotion is happiness, sadness. Emotion is, I want what they've got. Emotion is hunger, um, which, you know, when I see photos of food, I'm like, oh, well, I want, you know, Julie's cups of tea. I'm like, I need a cup of tea again. <laughs> There's so many types of emotion that you can weave into your marketing. And it's, and it, so when you know who you're talking to, it's much easier to weave in the correct tone of emotion. Does that make sense, Julie, as a little yes. extra point that I put in? Absolutely. I think also, and in, in going, I, I mean, it's a different world now with pandemic here and, you know, just more and more moving towards online businesses. I think it's so important that we're more relatable to people. And so an emotion and story plays a huge part in that. Yeah. Um, Rebecca is on um, and Rebecca wrote the most amazing. Um, so I should come back on a video now because she knows I'm going to talk, give her a shout out. Rebecca wrote the most amazing post for Mother's Day, which we had earlier in March here in the UK. And it was for women who, like Rebecca, aren't mums, for women who can't be mums, for women who choose not to be mums, but for women who are aunties and friends and champions. And honest, it was just, it was beautiful. And so, you know, that's true. That's emotion at its most truest. But there's all other types of, a, of a, you know, right down to the, like, you know, the silly cat gif and the silly cat video. <laughs> but it covers all, all the range of emotions. So have a, have a look back at your marketing recently and just see, you know, where you are on, on that emotional scale. But I'll, I'll leave that there because it's something I could, I could talk about for a long time. I know, I know. I'm interested in that blog post, Rebecca. Are you able to um, share the link in the comments in the chat? Yes. Awesome. Really beautiful. Really good. Well, okay. we'll, we'll might make it go viral here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rebecca comes and does a book tour in Canada. I will come as her PA. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> awesome. Ottawa. Don't forget Ottawa. <laughs> no, well, anything I can do to come and have a photo shoot with you, Julie, I'm there. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we will um keep cracking on so all of the things all of the people um all of the time hashtag all of the time now this is probably one of the biggest marketing mistakes that i make that I, well i made. i was gonna say that the other people make that i i still make okay and um, which is why this year i had to create a whole planner for myself, I thought, well, I can sell this, but I need to really get myself um, focused. But people, I want to say people don't spend enough time on their marketing. But that is not strictly true because people spend all of the time, you know, that I uh, sort of being sarcastic, hashtag all of the time. And um, what I mean is people will spend that they'll be on their phones and it'll be this post in a group post in a group random share it to my instagram story post on a comment take a selfie and there's nothing wrong with that per se but it's not very structured and it's not very strategized and it's very um spray and pray you know it's just like we're opening up your phone waiting to see what goes psh, and then you respond back to it so it, it's, it's quite reactive marketing and it can take all of the time it can literally suck up all of the time I will check my phone maybe on a Sunday morning I come down with Livy she puts the telly on I make a cup of tea we have a biscuit and I'm like this and, you know, and we go downstairs at quarter to seven. And before I know it, it's half past eight in the morning. Like, what have I done? <laughs> so <laughs> it's so true. Is, is it, and then for people, I say, so what have you done on your marketing? Oh, I've done loads on my marketing. I, I was on Facebook and I was on Pinterest. And so there's two things here that being on social media is not your marketing and social media, or at least it is not your 
only form of marketing there are so many other forms of social media and social media should only really be part of your marketing certainly for a lot of a lot of our businesses so spending all of the time i would rather i will say to people how much time can you give me to do your marketing this month five hours a week really you're going to give me 20 hours to do your marketing yeah come yeah i am <laughs> okay crack on <laughs> so there's a challenge set they come back and so, so how much marketing did you do i didn't actually have that much time because i had to do this the kids had this i got distracted with that so how much marketing did you do and um, well i said i'd do five hours i probably did a about an hour and 10 minutes properly. Right. How much time did you spend scrolling Facebook? Is it go and check because we've put the tracker on your phone, go and check uh, like two and a half hours a day, something like that. So you see that you tell me you've got all of this time, but that's really hopeful. And actually you've got less time to do your marketing that you think and then a lot of that time you are wasting on social, which feels like a, a real criticism. And it's not. It's just an observation of where we are at the moment. And especially when nearly all of us in the world have been on in pandemic lockdown and we've not had that physical ability to meet people. I think in a way we're even more connected to our technology. So what I'm encouraging you to do is rather than spend all of the time on your marketing, is to spend some of the time, some of your time. So actually sit and look at your diary and look at your average week. <laughs> Rebecca knows me quite well and she knows I have no average week. <laughs> Hence why I had to make myself a planner. <laughs> so, But what is your average week? And how much time do you realistically, realistically have to do your marketing? Don't worry about, oh, I need to blog and I need to do. I'm not bothered about what you have to fit in that. I want to know how much time you can free up to really proactively, strategically, emotionally do your marketing. Then we can figure out what the hell goes in that time. And then probably go, if you told me you've got two and a half hours, we'll say, right, well, how don't we, why about don't we make it one and a half hours? Again, we're being realistic. Do that one and a half hours. Do it really well. If you think you can do a bit more, we'll keep adding to it and we'll keep adding to it. But what you must promise me is that that one and a half hours is your marketing time. It's not your Facebook scrolling time. It's not, you know, if you need to be in or on Facebook or Instagram for your marketing, you do it. You do what you have to do and you come back out again. You do your hour and a half marketing. And when that's done, you can do what the hell you want. You can watch Bridgerton all over again on Netflix. You can spend the rest of your day on Facebook. You can exercise. You, you can. So I'm asking you to spend some of your time on marketing. And also that takes away the stress because people go, I did no marketing because I didn't know how long to spend and I needed to do this and I needed to do that. And it, oh, and you can feel, literally, you can feel, if I could see people's auras, and I think Anne-Marie's wallpaper is so beautiful, it looks a bit like an aura. It's really gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, you can see, go on, Anne-Marie. It's actually one of my photos. It's a what? A photo. Julie and I do it's this. I have my own stock site as well. Oh, yeah it's it's a it's a magnolia flower of course yes you can see how big it is now oh my god it's beautiful don't look at my wall it's not even painted this, this is done not perfect studio in the back <laughs> so you you can see people's anxiety rising so then what happens is rather than spending all of the time they spend none of the time so potentially we've got someone now talking to none of the people, selling none of the things, spending none of the time. <laughs> so people end up totally walking away from their business, walking away from their marketing and wondering why no one's selling, but they've th th their anxiety prevents them from actually doing anything. So talking to some of the people, some of the time about 
some of the things you sell is so much more powerful. Okay, so you can really see I'm pulling you back to the realism. And I've dropped in blogging, SEO, social media, but none of this is about tactics or ideas. The, your marketing ideas come at the end. Your marketing ideas are the last puzzle piece. Okay, you need to know what are you doing? Who are you talking to? Why are you doing it? For how long are you going to do it? And then what marketing tactics work for what I need to achieve? All right, I can blog. I can do Pinterest. I, you, it, too often we find a piece of marketing we like or we think that works and we shoehorn it in. <laughs> it's like, we will make this work no matter. Like, no. So I do often say to people, stop doing that. Try doing this. It's going to take you less time and you'll get a better result. How does that sound? Is that one sort of okay, Julie? Yeah. So making some remarks. Yes. Happen. Yes. Makes sense completely. Good. Well, that really is, um, that covers the next one as well, number four, which was all of the marketing things. You know, we try and I must do Facebook. I must blog. I must work on my website. Um, I'm, I, I, I must go to networking events online and in Zoom. I, I must be a guest speaker. I have to get my stuff in a business bundle. Um, I have, and it, like, guys, you cannot do everything. You're only one person with a finite amount of time. So you, you cannot do all of the marketing things it is much this is why um you know so spending some of the time talking to some of the people um about some of the things all of the marketing things changes to marketing habits which is sort of rebecca's in sort of in, in, in my world and and i would love the rest of you to be but rebecca is sort of in my world here in the uk and hears me talk a lot about marketing habits and saying you know probably most of us need somewhere about five i've got nine marketing habits we've got five rebecca so i've you know i i, I wanted people I, I try and say to people start with five have five things that you do regularly that's not five things that you do daily because people go what well, I've got to do five things a day. No, I work in like six weeks around the kids, around school. So you might blog twice in a two week, twice in a six week period. You might check Facebook groups every day, like your post, Julie, you know, share your Instagram, let's start a, a follow, that sort of thing. Your various groups you're in, you take 10 minutes to check all of the groups, to post, to comment, you move on again. You might only um or you might send an rebecca sends an email once a week okay so you can see how you have these habits but you're not doing all of them all of the time either they they should be you should feel you should look at your plan and go yeah i can i can handle that if you look at your marketing plan which can be a simple one page this is what I'm going to do this month. If you look at that plan and it causes you any level of anxiety, you need to bring it back again until you've got something you can really, really work on. So don't do all the marketing things. Like how I've wanted to be on Pinterest forever and I'm on Pinterest as a user, but I look at it for business and I think, I, I can't I just can't get my head around it. <laughs> just, so I just start doing it but I am getting a VA my first ever VA I'm very proud starts next week and she's going to do my Pinterest for me because it's one of the things that she does and I've got so much evergreen blog content it would be a shame to, to you know to not do it um but at you this is secret nobody else knows this yet um but I am deleting my LinkedIn app and taking LinkedIn off my, um, I don't know if I can take it off my browser, but I'm just deleting my LinkedIn in app completely. Um, I might see if I can deactivate my account and I'm deleting my Twitter account as well. So that's going, they're going to have posts on. So if anyone says I'm not on here, I don't like it here, go and find me at. <laughs> and I'm, I think because of what I do, I feel like I need to be, a jack of all trades and 
show up on every little place and do a little bit of everything and I, and it's just it's driving me crazy Julie that the amount of notifications and then feeling like you have to respond so I'm putting a notice on I'm not here this is where you'll find me and if anyone does get in touch and say I I tagged you on LinkedIn and you just ignored me I can say I'm not on there <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's brilliant. And I think that we I think we all go through that and we feel guilty about not being on all of the platforms. But what's important to remember is that you you should do what f your feel good marketing, like feel marketing, good marketing, feel good marketing. Yeah. And I've um, one of the things I'm working on at the minute is um, a big list of marketing ideas that I can sell as, as a product. And it sits within my, my, my sort of um what's the word headline sort of signature flagship course it sits within that as a bonus but I'm drawing it out to be its own product so it's 126 marketing ideas there's one goes in alphabetical alphabetical order one of the s's is social media the other 25 125 aren't anything to do with social media like I think we've forgotten how to market in old-fashioned ways even if we're online business owners, you know, getting something in the post, sending somebody a letter. Um, those, those. Rebecca um, has recently launched a book and I ordered one and you can see that sunflowers are sort of Rebecca's brand and the envelope came out and it was yellow and it had sunflower washi tape on it and there was a, a personalised bookmarking and you're like all of these little, I guess, vintage marketing anything that's not social that's offline is is it vintage so see maybe how when you're just doing some of the marketing things if you came up with your habits if you wrote down everything you did have you got some things in there that are old-fashioned do you know what the most old-fashioned best piece of marketing advice is i can give you remembering that that is for this not for that yes <laughs> and picking up the phone and i know as well we can like me and you do julie we chat on um like facebook in those little one minute facebook snippets of voice i know and then it cuts you off and then you <laughs> but, but yeah talking to someone sending something in the post old-fashioned marketing is 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 great um so again actually i think i've I've really covered that that, that my, my last one was um all of the plans you, you which I really have covered you have all of the plans to do all of the marketing and and I, I did cover that because that's when you see people's anxiety you know and so I in in ye olden times before COVID when you would meet someone with a coffee and I would ask them to bring me their marketing plan and they'd sort of they get out their book and they'd be like, right, well, on this page, I've got this. And then on this page, I've got this. <laughs> so, oh my God. Right. Can we get that onto one page? Can we please get that onto one page? And that is so much better. It's, you can do it. So in recap, um, by the way, I like to be known as the person who talks about marketing in the most random way possible. So if this has been the most random marketing session you've been on, then I'm I'm proud <laughs> I'm proud of that. I didn't want to come in on and talk to you about, you know, all the normal marketing stuff. So I wanted it to be a bit different for Julie. So you are not going to do all of the things. Well, you're not going to sell all of the things to all of the people all of the time using all of the marketing things and trying to do all of the plans you are going to promise yourself that you are going to sell some of your things to some of your people because your people are out there and you're only going to sell some of the time but that's going to be real time quality time and you're only going to use some of the marketing things because you've only got so much time, a certain skill level, so much money. A lot of the marketing platforms, MailChimp, whatever, costs money. So you're going to do some of the marketing things and you're going to squeeze a little bit of old fashioned vintage marketing in there as well. And then instead of having all of the plans, 
you're going to have a one page marketing plan that has on your marketing habits. What do I do every month? I think a month is a bit anxiety inducing, actually. What do I do every six weeks? And if you give yourself a break, yeah, I tend to in the school holidays do accounts and check emails and not do, you know, I give myself a bit of a break. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, what's your what are your marketing habits going to be? And then I hope that going from this sort of slightly crazy anxiety driven business owner who's achieving nothing you'll be calmer, you'll be serene, you'll look like one of the beautiful women in Julie's gorgeous photos, <laughs> having a <laughs> lovely chat with her business pal. And you will end up to a place where you can say you love your marketing. And that's what my that's what my brand, my vision is all about, is to help you love your marketing. And if you could get there, then honest, that would be brilliant. That's amazing. So thank you so much. This was this was so good. Does everybody agree? Um, does yeah, does anybody have any questions about anything for Michelle? It was it's it's, you know, especially when it's not one of the things that we go and learn about, right? It's, we don't. We don't. Yeah. You, you just make it up as you go along. Um, and I think um, I love Rosalind's quote, the art of choosing clarity, confidence and calm. It's not just like exudes just gorgeousness. Um, and I think that, you know, talking to you today and the way that I try and teach people, it's about being supportive and not being prescriptive, prescriptive, pres yeah, sorry, prescriptive, because I think when you are small and in, in you and even sort of a, a relatively established business owner and you're looking for marketing help there's people who've really made it and it's like they say I'll show you how to do it but you have to do it my way and my way is the only way and my way works and their way does work because they've had huge success with it but you've got to find your way so being supportive rather than prescriptive and allowing you to find your own journey within you know and I think you've got to make those five mistakes to end up coming to a place where you're pretty sure what marketing you're doing, but also giving yourself the breaks because we'll never, we never get it right. We're always learning. Oh. True. Yes. Yes. And you know, like, and sometimes like I found like maybe just even a year ago that I was paralyzed. I was, I was paralyzing myself because I was, overwhelmed by all of the ways and and so i did nothing i didn't do the blogging i didn't do the pinterest because i was overwhelmed i didn't do the instagram right but then i was able at that point to get a pinterest va and do that for me so i don't have to worry about pinterest and it it was such a load off of my shoulders but i think that you know if we start by bait what like just baby steps into the right direction and not feel not feel guilty or or bad because we are not doing all of the ways we think we should do if we start just implementing one and then when we feel comfortable and good with that one we can add on another one or we get to a point where we can hire someone to help us do that stuff yeah you become a real expert you know, i say to my clients i i'm quite happy being a jack of all trades and knowing enough about everything but I want you, I'm not here to teach you, like, like, you know, like I was saying before, the dark arts of Facebook advertising. I can get started. I can do a few ads. I, you know, I'll watch, I sort of keep my hand in and watch trainings, but it, it's more so that I can help people figure out if those sorts of marketing are the right types of marketing for them. And I say, if, if that's what we think you need, you go, you dabble, you try. And if you need to be good at it, you go and learn and you become the you know you become the the expert and really go and focus in on on a certain type of, of marketing and so i totally agree about you know about what you were saying you either find what you're good at and you get even better at it or you give it to someone else to do and you go and try the, the next thing and there was one other thing um what was i going to say 
oh, this is where the joys of being in your 40s, where just thoughts that you have that are really <laughs> good just totally disappear out of your brain. Um, it'll come, will it come back to me? The no. feeling guilty thing? Um, or paralyzed and not doing anything? That as well. Um, no, it'll probably come back to me at about 10 to 5 this afternoon, and I'll be in the group <laughs> going, This is what it was. <laughs> it's 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 a uh, mommy brain that just never goes away well no i think yeah <laughs> it's just and i think just general um I, I, that see i thought um that my brain fog and forgetfulness with words was of being a certain age but i, I read a, a report in the news that said because we're at home so much and because we're talking to the same people, our partner or our kids, and uh, we're not out in sort of society and, you know, winging it. It's like we're, we're having the same conversations really again and again. We're sort of like, it's, we're forgetting words. We're forgetting things. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, well, at least, at least I know what it is. Um, no, I, the, the thought isn't going to come back, Julie, but I will pop it in the group if I remember. It's about, you know, be kind to yourself be kind to your business play to your strengths do what really works that's what i was going to say it's come back to me so let me end on this okay when so let's just say i when i signed up to stock by jewels okay loved you knew i wanted to be a member um i did not sign up or i sign up to you or i'm trying to think about the right way I didn't go, I found you in a Facebook group. I liked you, I connected with you. I did that. Did not then go and check out Twitter, check out your LinkedIn, sign up for your emails and wait four weeks to see if you sent me two emails every week. I didn't go and check out every day and see what your Insta stories were like. Quite frankly, I couldn't give a shit what the rest of your marketing was like because I found you and I'd connected with you and I wanted to buy from you. You found me on that platform and that was enough. And I probably wouldn't have found you on LinkedIn and I probably wouldn't have found you on Twitter. So if you think about the amount of people who've come to you and said, I love what you do. I was so, I was so close to giving you my money but you weren't doing all of the marketing things. So no way, no way. <laughs> you know, Rebecca knows the amount of times I turn up to a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with my hair's back like this, I've got no makeup on and, but it's sort of not what I look like. I hope it's what comes out of here. <laughs> so no one's ever said to me, Michelle, that mentoring session was really good. You've given me such good advice, but you didn't have any makeup on, so I'm not paying you because you didn't look good enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> right? So, yeah, go easy on yourself and just know when people find you and they love you, they'll buy from you. And they're not bothered that you're not doing all of the other stuff because you've been where they needed you to be at that moment in time. Good point. I love it. I love it so much. Excellent. Well, you know what? Um, Tell us, Michelle, because you're amazing and I know that people are going to want to know more about you. So what, I know you have some freebies on your website, so I'm going to link them, but how can we work with you and where can we find you? Oh, lovely. Yeah, I, um, my website is Michelle Rose, as in the flower, Michelle Rose Marketing.com. And I have got quite a few freebies. The the new one at the moment is uh, what is it called <laughs> oh, can you edit this bit out julie um it's every there's your everything you everything ish everything ish you need to know about your marketing in less than 10 minutes and it's actually nine minutes and one second and it takes you through the four i only believe there's four types of marketing so with this session and that session, you get a really good idea of sort of what I think and feel about marketing. But there's loads of freebies on the website. My big course is Love Your Marketing. That's self-study. And next week, I am running Awesomely Average Realistic Goal Setting for Your Business, which is how to set a properly realistic goal step by step. Um, 
so I'm, I'm running that there's there's loads of ways and I guess what I get complete joy out of is mentoring one-to-one is on zoom we used to be having a coffee with people but on Zoom, mentoring people. So my online stuff tends to be people who are getting started or who want to be, who want to restart or rejuvenate. And then the mentoring tends to be just sort of hand-holding people a little, a little bit further along their journey. And often it's people, it's people the same as you, Julie, people who I would consider peers, because actually when you mentor each other and actually when you pay for that service and you mentor, because you're obviously doing a lot of helping people grow their business now, you you get so much from it. People see it from a completely different perspective. So online self-study, getting started, one-to-one mentoring, just as you're growing or so even at, at, a, at a peer-to-peer level as well and I just love waffling on about marketing basically <laughs> <laughs> I love it it's wonderful so thank you so much for having me and for letting me have a have a little chat to everybody I love it thank you so much thanks so much for being with us today Michelle and I am excited to share the replay with everybody love it thank you all for the comments are really gorgeous thank you so much and lovely to meet everyone and i'll i'll see you in julie's group i hope <laughs> we will have a great day everybody